Let me go ahead and set this one off real quick and bid everybody a shalom. I'm going to say assalamu alaikum to all my brothers of that particular faith and peace and blessings to everybody else. Welcome to this edition of Facts Over Feelings. You are in tune to the most hated on most interrupted, most sensitive, but most truthful live stream on, the, on, on social media right now. I'm just going to go ahead and let you know right now. If you really want to know what's going on, this is where you want to be at least for the next two hours. So you ain't got to hear it from nobody but the horse's mouth right here as the leader and founder of the NFAC and as what somebody called today one of the brightest voices in this new movement uh, we just like to say that we are proud of ourselves that no matter what they say against us no matter how they try to slander us no matter how afraid they might be of the NFAC we represent a time that the people have had enough it's not just the NFAC there's people sitting out there right now that have had about enough of the I'm we just getting started Facts over feelings tonight. We're going to deal with some things tonight. But before we do that, we're going to give praise to the most high. We're going to stop what we doing and we're going to lift up. We're going to lift them up. We're going to stop. We're going we're to we're stop walking around acting like we did all of this. We're going to stop acting like we got more done in two months than anybody else who's ever attempted to do stuff like this. Not because we special, but because it is time if you are reading the books. So tonight, speaking of the books, I want to open up with a topic that I know is near and dear to everybody's heart. OK, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop by the petty department for a minute. While I'm in the petty department, I just want to say now to all you people that ran out here and spread that lie about there being a shooting at our formation in Louisville. How do you feel now? Now that the truth has come out, you don't believe it when the black man told you. But when the white man said it, everybody's like, oh, it must be true. That right there shows that you still got chains attached to the plantation. We came to chop, 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 take them off. Listen to me next time. I keep telling y'all shit and y'all don't be listening. Y'all keep listening to these clowns around here. Y'all run around listening to everybody except the people that was there. And then when the truth come out, everybody sitting there talking about, well, you know, I'm going on what I was told. Don't you know you got to do your research? Everybody wheels coming off now. Everybody backpack. I'm, I'm collecting apologies in alphabetical order right now. And you know, they don't say nothing about nobody else, but soon as the black folks, and I know people are like, they go that race again. I'm not the one that made it racist. I'm looking at the unfair treatment that we're receiving when there are white militias out here and ain't nobody asking them all these damn questions. Ain't nobody trying to interview them. Ain't nobody trying to see who to drop some shit over there and shot nobody over there. It's only because it's brothers and sisters and there's a perceived threat and it's growing. And now y'all tried this bullshit and it backfired. Mm-hmm. So, so NFAC, y'all should be proud of y'all See, they don't took that off of you now. Okay? But we, we, we want y'all to also understand that, that I'm going to show you some things tonight. Because a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all, I'm just going to go into it. A lot of y'all think y'all got game. Yeah, you think you got game. You do, you do. You think you're running game. You think you're running game hard. Matter of fact, some of y'all think y'all the masters of the game. Y'all think y'all invented the game. Y'all, the game was handed down from generation to generation. That's what you believe. But what if I told you that a game had been ran on all of y'all? And I'm going to show you tonight. Okay, let me break it down like this. Y'all know it when you used to watch football before you found out that, that the NFL is just overglorified slavery. Before y'all found it out. Remember whenever something would go wrong and they really couldn't figure it out. It looked like it might be one way or the other. They had the dude and the dude would go in the booth and you put the little thing on it. And everybody be standing around to be waiting and shit because they don't know what he's going to do. You know, and the bruh be in there for a minute and everybody be out there speculating on what he's going to do. Everybody act like they know what he's going to do. They running charts and graphs and shit. They writing fake Bibles. They teaching you the, a perverted gospel. They doing anything except knowing that the dude is still in the booth. You don't know why he's in the booth. You can't see what's happening in the booth. But y'all run around being experts and whatnot. So when the man come out the booth, he has the power. To change the game. So if somebody. Been in the booth. And they come back and try to show you how to change the game. You don't sit there and fight with them. And make a fool out of yourself. All you're doing is fulfilling prophecy. That's all you're doing. And you don't even see it. But that's okay. Because 
there's a spirit of karma floating around the world and apparently everything balances out. So congratulations to all of y'all who showed us your true colors by publishing and repeating that story that there was a three people got shot. Let me tell y'all, y'all funny to me. Somebody even called me, <laughs> it's funny, called me. They called me on the phone to show you how people think. And they said, Jay, I heard you got shot and that you was in the ICU. If I was in the ICU, how am I answering the phone? What, I'm superhuman? I just recovered from the ICU all of a sudden and now I'm answering the damn phone? No. Who told you that? <laughs> you see, they're trying to, they want y'all to think that we're a threat because we are a threat to their order, to their way of life. Let me tell you something that a lot of people don't understand. Americans are divided by their views on race, not race itself. That's why you can have people that look just like me and you that'll sit there and say the most racist stuff out their mouth against their own people. And you'll be sitting there looking at them like, you really believe that? And you got melanin in you and you be all messed up because in your mind. You just can't understand how somebody who looked like you doesn't share the same views on race that you do. So that's what we fighting right now inside of the black community. We got two breeds of people mixed up together. They got different views on race. You know how many people? Have had a falling out with their family members because their family members want they comfortable in their captivity. Oh, they mad right now. They don't left them. They don't left the living mind. Come here to hear that shit because the truth hurts. It's true. We've been in bondage for four hundred years. It's time to go, and you still sitting there. I don't want to go nowhere. I like it here. Then you keep your ass right there. But don't hate on the people that want to leave. Don't hate on the people that want to be free. Don't hate on the people who want to resist what's going on. Don't hate on them. Let them go. You don't hold on to nobody when they want to walk in their purpose. If your purpose is, if their purpose is to go out and make a difference for their people and your purpose is to ride on the couch, then so be it. But don't stand in their way and don't hate on them. You never know who's born into your blood. You know, I told you a lot of these souls come back. I told you that ancestors come back. Y'all don't believe me. Every time you have deja vu, all that is, is a checkpoint that you made it this far last time. They didn't tell y'all that, did they? You're going to do this over and over again until you get it right. So when you go past one of them little checkpoints, you've got been here before. You did. Now keep going because you haven't reached your ultimate test yet. This is a classroom, people, to develop your soul. You can't evolve to the next level till you pass this damn class. Now, one of the key things that we have to have in order for us to overcome these views that we have on race, is we can forget about the concept of race. Just try it. It's almost impossible. It's been ingrained into your psyche, race. When the truth of the matter is, there is no race. There may be two different types of people, but they're not in a race. They're not competing. They invented race because it's a competition for your resources. And right now you're losing Africa. That's why we got to get together, Africa, and reclaim the continent, Africa, and push these people out, Africa, so that we can have the, all the resources to make everybody come to us that buy from us, Africa. We rich overnight, Africa, the United States of Africa. Scares a lot of people because they don't understand that the way we get there before we can get there as a people physically we got to get there as a people mentally. It's like being in a relationship. And a lot, if you've been in a long-term relationship that didn't work out, you know exactly what I'm about to say is true. And if you haven't, you'll learn one day. But for those of us who've been around the block about eight, nine times, we know that you leave the relationship long before you physically leave the relationship. Can I talk to somebody? You know you've been done. It's been over. We don't even know why we're just being sociable around here. You one step away from throwing some on them, they're ready to shoot you. You know it should have been over, but it's you've been gone. You've been gone. As a people, we have to been gone before we physically can go. And that's what all these talks are about. Because if I can get it in your mind that you got to start to think of this place as some place that it is time to go, then you can understand the process of how we go. So you can't ask, where are we going to go? How are we going to get there? You ain't gave it no thought yet. It's not going to come to you already made. It's going to come to you when you put the energy in that creates it. 
and you've been given the fertile bed right now. All the soil you need is right here. You got everything you need. All you got to do is do it. And you ain't got to come out. It ain't, I keep telling y'all, this ain't no Moses shit. We ain't talking about everybody out there with bags and shit on their back and people carrying people on sticks and that damn music playing. Oh, I don't know who came up with that. No, we're not talking like that. We're talking about a process. We're talking about it starts with an idea. And if we don't have friendship, let me tell you what that means. See, when people hear friendship, they think of somebody that they just know. That's not what the ancients call friendship. Friendship was something you had to achieve. It wasn't something, he's my friend. Really, prove it. How is he your friend? Yeah, I can go right here to chapter 45 in the Gold Bronze book. Somewhere around chapter 45, it says, the man without a friend should be avoided, for he is a man of iniquity. For every man should have one friend and no more that he can count on his fingers. Look what they just said. You gotta have at least one friend. You ain't got no friends. See, that's some creepy shit right there. You be like, nah, I ain't got no friends. Y'all in the car together, driving somewhere, and somebody say, so tell me about your friends. I ain't got no friends. Well, why you ain't got no friends? I ain't never needed none. Nigga ain't never needed none. You can let me out right here. How are you going to know how to interact with another human being on a daily level if you don't have some friends? I don't mean people you're using. I don't mean people you're abusing. I don't mean people that you're choosing because they serve a certain purpose. I'm talking about somebody you have a bond with. Somebody you can tell your dirty secrets to. They can tell you their dirty secrets. Y'all ain't got to speak for years. But when y'all see each other again, y'all jump right back in where y'all left off. Y'all know y'all got people like that. Can I talk to y'all for a second? Are we facts over feelings tonight? We rolling. We talking about it. Most of y'all are divided. By your views on race, not by race itself. You see, and I'm just going to spitball here for a second. A lot of y'all don't understand that those qualities that we look for. It says he who is a good friend will never lack friends. But he who thinks he has many friends has none. Man, how deep is that right there? Look what they just said. Look what he just said. They're trying to show you this is all about the attitude that we have to adopt toward the people that's supposed to be our family members, supposed to be friends on the street, supposed to be somebody else's child, supposed to be a lady in distress. Let me tell you something. I was driving down the highway the other day and I, was, I don't know where I was coming from, but I was on my pro black shit. I was playing all my dead prayers. I had a car bump and I'm riding down the highway all black and shit. And I saw this brother standing on the, in the middle of the median and he was the brother. He had no shirt on, had dreads, young looking brother. And in my mind, I went, what the bro doing out here? Then I saw on the other side, there was a cop talking to him. So I'm like, okay. First, my mind was like, okay. But then something said, no, it's not okay. Don't leave that bro out there like that. So, you know, we put on the superhero cape and got on at the next exit, turned around, came screaming back down and drove my ass right back to where they were. That shit was funny as hell, y'all. When I pulled up on that cop, he didn't know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> that dude was talking to him. He went, whoa, whoa, what's going on? And the dude didn't know me. So he didn't know what was going on either. So he's doing a great job of playing dumb. He was like, I don't know, nigga. You asking wrong, nigga. I'm, go find out, nigga. Shit, you all you got a gun and shit. I'm staying right here. I ain't going nowhere. He was cool and shit. So the dude got out the car. But before he got the car, I was already out the car. And I was like, you all right, bro? And the cop was like, well, I'm just I'm like, I ain't asked you nothing. I'm talking to the brother. Bro, you all right? My man was like, yo, man, my car broke down. He was just waiting for me, you know, until the tow truck got here. Then I felt bad because I was scared the shit out of the cop. So I turned back to the cop and the cop is standing there. He shook because he wasn't expecting that level of resistance. Okay. So he goes, so he's like, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for the, the, the dude. And I'm sitting there like, I don't scare the shit out of the cop. <laughs> but the point was I had to stop and see if the bro was all right. And he was all right. So I had to get in the car and drive off and go scare the shit out of the cop, but it's cool. One for the team. Turned my ass back around, came back up the street, blew the horn at him, and kept it moving. That's what I mean about if you see something, don't just blow it off because you don't know what a person going through. You don't know how that situation going to turn out. You're not being a bad guy because you want to turn around and make sure somebody's all right. And I don't mean what the cops tell you. What do they tell you? You never know. Oh, he, we got everything under control. But then the dude say they've been beating my ass for about an hour out here. Now, I told y'all we ran game on you. Y'all ain't listen up, youngins. OGs, oh, you know I'm about to break down the game, right? <laughs> so, <sighs> when are y'all gonna learn 
No, really. When are y'all going to learn? Because they run the same game on y'all time in and time again, and y'all fall for it every time. It's like the banana in the tailpipe trick. Y'all fall for it every time. All right, let me break it down for you because y'all did not miss the play. Here's how they played you. Follow the game. We sitting here talking about unify, right? We sitting here talking about getting together so that we can pool our resources, build our own communities, protect our children, protect our sisters, build solid family units, put some money back into our community, have our own businesses again, our own police force, our own education, our own medical, our own military, our own everything. We sitting here having a, this is what we're talking about. This is the mode that we in right now. And everybody knows that's what we into right now. Now, while all that's going on, Somebody is watching all of this and they saying, mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. They talking about putting some shit together. They talking about nation building. They ain't talking about no state building. They don't want raggedy ass Texas. Stop saying that shit. That shit's old news. No, they got bigger dreams. They want their own country. Not here, but somewhere where they will carve out, not go to nobody else's shit. Give us our own so we can build our own. Now, they don't want to hear that. So here go the game. Then they do this to y'all every time. I'm going to break the game down. And I guarantee you when I get done with this illustration, if you still walking down the same path that you walking down, then that means that you have that mindset that I just talked about. You're not going to change because you have black skin. Your mind is of the view that you don't believe any of the things that the pro-black or the black struggle is asking for. The right to be treated as an equal human being. You know, you believe that everybody's already treated equal. You don't think that there's been any oppression going on because you know you live uptown and you got it good so you can't understand what's going on. You don't understand the police brutality and the over-policing and the poverty and all the, and the, the lack of, 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 of community services for the kids and for medical in community and all that stuff. You don't understand all of that. You live uptown by the mall. Okay? So you don't get it. You're going to be the one that's going to sit there and look like us and be like, oh, I can't agree with any of that. I don't understand what they're doing. It doesn't have to take all of that. Well, then if it don't take all that, what the fuck do it take? Because right now, this is all you got. Y'all gonna keep sitting there letting them pick at it and try to demonify it. Then when y'all need somebody to actually step up, you wouldn't give a damn if they could shoot a pea shooter or a goddamn slingshot. Because if you wanted to be on the front lines, you would be there. If somebody's willing to stand on the front line for you and at least try to do something, and you will stand back and criticize, but your ass ain't going to come to the front line, that's some cowardly shit. In the military, we'll shoot your ass for that. We'll shut your ass up. Now, they ran the game on y'all like this. Without trying to find out anything about the truth, without trying to do any real investigation, they saw an opportunity to cut into something that they didn't really want to talk about. And that was what? Stone Mountain. They didn't want to talk about no damn Stone Mountain. What are you crazy? Talk about Stone Mountain. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you get them? Don't you get them, black people, that image? Don't you show them what the, they tried to ignore it? Because they thought that was it. You know, they did it at one time. It was impressive. But if we ignore it, it'll go away. But what they did not know was they wasn't. You notice now they watch this live stream. I've seen it on TV. So they got smart and found out, well, where did all this shit come from? Oh, they over on Instagram. You understand what I'm saying? Because they realized that what they had ignored, that was they fought. I know it was a lot of people got pulled in their office. They was like, so, uh. You knew about this in fact thing and you didn't write nothing about it. Well, well our, 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 my ass. You, oh, no, 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 we don't do that. Now, we look at what we got now. We got a goddamn problem on our hands. Y'all don't understand how serious this is and how it's a power moment for black folks. Y'all, y'all going to sit here and bumble that. Let me finish how they ran the game on you without reporting an ounce of truth. They started to lie. They put the lie out there. They put the lie as breaking news. It was breaking news, a lie. I've taught y'all about neurolinguistics. Remember three truths that are a lie? What was the truth? The truth that there was a black, a black guns formation. That was true. The truth of the matter was it was in Louisville. That was the truth. The truth was it was in Walter Park. That was the truth. There was three motherfuckers shot. That was a lie. That's neurolinguistics. I taught y'all that. 
<clears throat> y'all still feel for the okie doke? Then y'all started saying this shit. Oh, I see. I told you. Look at this bullshit. Oh, and then what did they do to you? Once they got you to start doing it to each other, they backed up and changed their story. Oh, we was wrong. Shit. I, I know. <laughs> you know, but they leave us fighting. They win again. They ran game on you. So if you sitting around hating on the NFAC or you was tricked, you tricks are for kids. They ran game on y'all. They waited just enough for us to start fighting amongst ourselves for them to change their story. Said, ah, we know we yeah, we got the information from somebody else. You know we didn't know, uh. but they ain't telling y'all that shit. Y'all still running with the okie doke. And then they sitting back like, look, they can't get together. We got them not trusting their own people. This shit works every time. Give me a five five. Them niggas never let me down. That's how they ran game on y'all. You got to see the bigger picture, people. Chess moves. Damn. Now. Now put that on the table, think about it. And you might have some people that are paid agents in this. I'm not one of them. You might have some people, I stop, man, let me tell you, let me tell y'all gotta stop reaching. Stop reaching. A man was talking trash about the church on live, and I told him to shut up. And they go, oh, that means he's getting paid. You know what? If I open up these doors to these donations that are trying to come in, y'all would think that I had ran into an NBA contract. That's how much money we turned down at the NFAC. Millions of dollars. Why? Because we don't want anyone to own us. People don't give you something for nothing. We're not like those other groups. So stop acting like we on some secret payroll. Or who's financing them? Nigga, go read Claude Anderson and learn about group economics. And why are you at it? I'm going to give you all this one for free. You also, there was some other game that was ran on you. Yes, there was. Let me give you all the other part of the game. OGs, listen up, youngins, pay attention. Not only did the white man run game on you and make you attack your own people, all of you naysayers of community policing didn't even realize what you witnessed. You see, when the incident happened and the LMPD showed up, they came to me for guidance because the, we had an agreement that I would maintain control of my area because I came back when it happened and we worked together. Here's the crazy part. They, would look, they waited for our investigation. We did our own investigation. We gave them our results. We, just like they do, we investigated ourselves and gave the results to the law enforcement. And the law enforcement came out and said, okay, that's the way it is. In other words, we just policed ourselves. We just gave you an example of community policing. There was a situation, but we investigated and we determined, here go the weapon and this is what happened and this is what happened. And they, okay, cool, we were cool with that. Nobody's going to jail, everything will be cool, good working with you. That's an example. We gave you all a clinic on community policing. Happened right in front of your face even though it wasn't presented to you. Right, nobody got arrested. There will be no arrest because we investigated ourselves. Now, that's two, get two games I done gave y'all tonight. Now let me give you the last one. The last one is something that everybody likes to talk about and it has to do more so with something that we are on. Uh, reparations. Reparations is the making of amends for a wrong one is done by paying money to or otherwise helping those who have been wronged. So let's see, when we start talking about reparations, reparations is what? Reparations for slavery. That's the application of the concept of reparation to victims of slavery and or their descendants. Okay, now there's, there's some concepts for reparations in legal philosophy and reparations in transition of justice. But we're not talking about that one. So what we're talking about is the ones for slavery and for its descendants. So a lot of folks go, like, what about me? I mean, I'm going to be left out. Well, that's because that's not what reparations is. not a group feeding. They don't give reparations to everybody in Germany. 
They give reparations to those who lived in Germany whose descendants were the Jews that lived there that were persecuted and then they tried to commit genocide against them in places like Auschwitz. You got to be one of those blood descendants to get the reparations. The same way in order for you to get reparations here, you got to be able to trace your bloodline back to one of these plantations, to somebody's slave house out in the back somewhere. We got to be able to be able to trace you back that far. At least we know you was part of the situation. Not that you showed up later for to take advantage of the, the great American opportunity. And Well, I was harassed while I was here. That ain't got jack shit to do with the people that was brought over here or brought from somewhere and enslaved the way they was. And then the people who are descendants of them still living behind the power curve and ain't got a goddamn thing those people need reparations those people need restitution somebody need to hook them people up problem with that is that every time somebody go to make the case it always stalls there's always a, a discussion but they're not discussing all these other groups that's getting reparations mm -hmm. but there's a reason for that and I keep ringing this bell and I'm going to ring it for you one more time until y'all get it. And that is this. You cannot pay reparations to a color. You see, black is not a country. Black is a classification of race. You cannot pay restitution to a color. You can only pay it to a country. So that means as hard as this might sound. We got to go on down here to the world court. We got to fill out the paperwork for liberation as declaration of a nation within the nation. And then we take that declaration that we are now a country within a country. We don't have an army. We don't got no land. We don't have our own trade system, but we got a goddamn flag. As soon as they come out, hey, hey, we you know we did, we don't we don't new niggas. OK, we got a flag, bro. OK. So we got a flag now, so we have an identity as a country. Now we can go as this country to the UN and say, look, we want to talk to y'all. Get everybody together, everybody sitting around, the whole everybody from around the world, and say, look, we're a country. It's doing bad right now. Okay, we need some relief. It's been rough. We ain't been around that long, but we, we need some space to grow. Well, where are you guys at? We're in the United States right now, but you know, anything that y'all can put together is all right with us. And they said, okay, they go talk to the United States. And you know, these people want to go. They said they want their own spot. The United States, you motherfuckers, is high. Ain't nobody going nowhere. We'll kill them before we let them leave. Well, you do understand that under the treaty, there's 55 countries that might disagree with you and they might support that country. You might find yourself in a war. Nobody's crazy enough to attack the United States. Who would do such a thing? What about the people that's already organized in your country that's forming a militia? They wouldn't, they wouldn't dare. <laughs> Can you picture this shit? They wouldn't dare. And they said, really? The way you hooked up other countries with missiles and bombs and uniforms and all kinds of stuff and call them freedom fighters. You don't think one of them countries would do that to you? Bruh, you better wake up. <laughs> you better wake up. NFAC is can turn into something a whole lot worse if you do some stupid shit. So I say all that to say this to you. Folks, we got to stop having these conversations without making the appropriate preparations and laying the foundation. Two things you have to have if you declare yourself a liberated country. Number one, you got to be able to have an identity. And number two, you have to have some type of way to fight back. You have to be able to fight back. Even if it's just guerrilla warfare, you got to, be, if they fuck with you, you got to be able to hit them back. You can't be a pushover. What happened? We're a new country. Shit is over. They took the flag. You know, it's over. It's a wrap. No. You want to have it so that, okay, we got a problem with y'all. Y'all in our country. Y'all, 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 y'all making all this goddamn noise. Y'all armed up. What's happening? Tensions is getting, what's going on? And then, like you say, we, we negotiate a position. When I, when you hear the term talks were good, that's the sign of a negotiation. That's not a sign of a conversation. That's somebody made their point. You made your point. We found a middle ground. Everybody was cool. The, the, the conversations I had with the attorney general is a prime example. If you notice, they said that conversations, uh, they were positive. That meant that we came to an agreement that there was, it was just like two generals sitting down to have a discussion because they understood that our position was serious. So that's how y'all got to be when we start talking about unifying. Depending on the frame of mind, some folks ain't going to unify with us. Yet those are some of the same people that are probably entitled to reparations. 
And that's why we end up right back where I told you. You cannot pay reparations to a color. You have to pay reparations to a country. Now, look, come on, y'all. Let's live in the real world for a minute. Put down the signs and rainbows and listen to what I'm about to tell you. You really believe that the United States would pay a trillion, two trillion, three trillion, 14 trillion, whatever. They, they would pay, and you sitting here? I really can't believe y'all would sit here and believe that. Matter of fact, I can't even begin to see them having those conversations. I cannot picture them them signing any documentation like that in any of the chambers. But if you leave here, form your own country, grow it, strengthen it, build trade, take advantage of the resources that are there, build your cultural centers, improve your science, build your military, and then come back and say about that 14 trillion in reparations you owe me. We need to get that. You delinquent. That's how you do it. If you're going to do it. Or you can just say the hell with it and leave the people behind that you want to leave behind and sit back and watch the show. Because if you really believe that we leave here and you stay behind, it's going to be all beds of roses talking about I'm so glad they gone. Bro, they're going to be looking at, <laughs> they're going to be looking at you like, really? <laughs> Time just got hard for everybody. That includes you. So thank, choose wisely. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Look here, y'all. I got to address something real quick uh, that came to my attention. And I'm going to address it right here on Facts Over Feelings. Listen, 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 listen. I know that there's a lot going on out there right now. We got some moist characters running loose. I understand that. But I also know that a lot of people are doing things because they're misinformed. So you, sometimes you have to have compassion on the fool. But what I won't tolerate is I will not have anybody who claims to be NFAC threatening any sister. Bros, you're on your own. Sisters. You will not be threatening my sisters. I don't care whether we at odds or not. Misunderstanding. You don't threaten the sister. Vicky, I heard about what's going on. I don't take point with any of this except that nobody in my organization better threaten this woman or do anything. If anything, you better protect her. That's our purpose. That's our mission. I don't want to hear. I don't want to see no more memes about somebody threatening this woman because she disagrees with the NFAC stance or something. Don't, don't do that. We've already killed the issue with the Boogaloo boys. We had nothing to do with them. Stop chopping up videos and let you listen to the whole thing. But I'm not going to sit back and let nobody threaten her. Vicky, I hope you get this message. I reached out to you. Nobody's going to threaten you. Nobody in my organization better not be threatening you. It's not that deep, people. She's still one of us. She's our sister. And we can agree to disagree. But we ain't going to start that taking each other out shit again. Remember, I told y'all that comes from slavery. We got to check that. I wanted to address that. I wanted to address that publicly. Uh, big shout out to you know, all my partners in the game. I'm not going to call no names out because I found out that some of my partners don't get along with each other. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but I cannot find out what's going on unless I know what's going on with everybody. So I don't pick and choose sides. Look here. Um, that's all I have for y'all tonight here on Facts Over Feelings. I really just wanted to touch on this reparation situation. We got to get to a country stage first. I wanted to talk a little bit about what's happening with all of this, 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 this back and forth and people running around, y'all got to start building some friendships amongst each other. And then I also wanted you to realize that they run in the same old game on you that they always run on you. They ran the game again. They started the lie. You picked up the lie. They changed their story. Got you fighting amongst yourselves. Meanwhile, they quiet sitting back watching. You talking about, look at these crazy ass names. Then they had to go back and put the truth out and everybody over here looking stupid now. Come on, y'all. We got to do better. Try to, how about you support rather than hate? Try it. It won't hurt. You'd be surprised. That's really what they don't want. They, they love to hate because they know otherwise you wouldn't have hated because everything was just going too good. But that's OK. We back on we back on track now. Everybody understand what happened. We good. Now I'm ready to sit back and look at what actually happened because the clock is ticking. Things are moving along. Mm hmm. In the meantime, in between time, I'm going to ask all of y'all the same thing I ask you every time. And that is keep your feet on the ground. Think about what we're doing. Stop letting them run game on you. See the bigger picture. I'm not going to keep coming back, breaking this down for you. Okay. I want y'all to know I only come to tell you the truth. I give you things to think about. I don't want, I don't want 
Y'all didn't act like nobody didn't tell you. I told y'all that that shit was a lie when it first happened, but nobody wanted to listen. But that's okay. Still love you. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going to leave you out there like that. So what did I do? I came back and told you again. Y'all ain't want to hear it. Y'all out there putting out, uh, y'all putting out videos and people all, everybody suddenly became an expert on me and all of this crazy shit going on. Rather than face the truth of the matter, and what was really going on was you didn't know the facts. You weren't there and nobody was reporting the actual story. I sat back and watched you make an ass out of yourself because I knew the truth. It didn't take long for everybody to start doing an investigation and found out what really happened. And the news people and police was like, yeah, they took a look at the shit too. They were like, by then y'all ran off with the story, made the story more than what it was. And and didn't realize that the white folks were the ones that were spreading it everywhere. And then they shut up. No, no, it was a mistake. And leader, y'all still arguing. <laughs> so after the, after I told you that you weren't in a ran game on you, if you're still running game right now, then I guess the only thing I can tell you is that you deserve what you get because the people are ready to move forward. And I know I speak for a good percentage of the melanated people around the world that we are ready to move forward forward. We are ready to unify and move forward. The mood is right now. The time is right now. People feeling it right now. Now we about to release the video of what happened in Louisville. Vice Magazine did a documentary. I can't wait to see it. Not to mention all the thousands of cameras and drone footage that you haven't seen. All of that's about to come out. And don't worry, we're going to do it again. And by the way, did y'all see the video of the white people that said that if, if they ran into us, we would wipe them out in 30 seconds? But they want y'all to think that we're a joke. Mm -hmm. They want y'all to think that we're untrained. Mm -hmm. Then why wouldn't they come around the corner then since we were so untrained and couldn't hit that this side of a barn? Y'all don't see me shoot a happy face in a piece of paper. Imagine what I would do to a person. Now, I'm going to leave y'all on a good note, <laughs> if there is one, uh, in, the, in the matter of where do we go from here, we have got to start working together, stop hating by default, and don't be too above somebody checking you when you do, we all do it, I know I do, and I know you do too, but Big Brother came and showed, gave y'all the game, and uh, y'all stay tuned because we ain't done yet. This is like, this is better than Kate. You ain't never seen no shit like this before. You're witnessing history unfolding right in front of your face. And a lot of y'all are sitting there missing it. And your kids will say, mama, what was it like? I don't know, son. I was too busy hating. <laughs> I'll see y'all on the flip side. NFAC, I salute you all. And that's all of our partners also. Hugh and Newton Gun Club, the Fred Hampton Gun Club, the Dark Riders. By the way, let me go and announce this one more time. Uh, we have entered into an agreement. The NFAC has entered into an agreement uh, with the Dark Riders of LA to go into Louisville to coordinate a gang ceasefire. Uh, between the gangs is down there warring right now to bring peace to that. If you don't know the history of the Dark Riders and the truce that they call between the Bloods and the Crips, that's why I brought them in and we're going in and we already going to sit down with the GDs and we're going to sit down with, with all the B's and C's and we're going we're gonna to negotiate a cease fire. We're going to get the guard in these neighborhoods, police in these neighborhoods, work along with these boys. So I told y'all we need those just coming through. Y'all got to see the rest of the video. Y'all got to see the parade that happened. Y'all got to see the speech that they won't show y'all. Y'all, especially the part where somebody said something about burning the goddamn city down. Y'all got to see the whole thing. You haven't seen the whole thing because the news rain game on you once again. That's all I got for y'all tonight. I'm going to see y'all on the flip side. If you haven't seen uh, the morning mental from this morning, I advise you to go watch that one. I really do. Uh, it's going to be on, matter of fact, on YouTube here shortly. And so will this. And to all of the other YouTube channels out there that replay my stuff, I thank you. I don't have a problem with y'all playing my stuff. Somebody said, well, they eating off your stuff. If people want to give you money for showing my stuff, I'm not, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it for my people. I'm not, that's why there's no cash app here. I ain't begging. Listen, the truth is to be told, not sold. I can't fault what another man do. All I can do is worry about you. I'm worried about why you, whether or not you know what's going on, whether or not you walk around with blinders on. Are you aware that they just ran game on you, that they playing with your emotions? That's what I'm concerned about because I can't move forward unless all of y'all on code. And all this other stuff is distraction. Do you understand what the brother's telling you? The time we living in right now, this is it. 
And on that note, I'm going to say shalom. And I'll see y'all real soon.